So you may have given up <laughs> on your dream of being a rock star, but you haven't given up your old guitar yet. Actually, I, I have an old guitar from those days when I thought smart I'd be a rock star. Smart move, very smart move. That guitar is far more than just a y link to your long, long ago youth, Allie. It may be the most sound investment you've got in the shaky economy. Stock market turmoil, a weak dollar, growing concerns about inflation, shaky times. But Rudy Pensa, owner of Rudy's Music Stop in New York City, isn't exactly singing the blues. He buys and sells new and vintage guitars. He says business is strong, even though the economy is not. Being in the, in the business for 30 years, I found out that when the stock market goes down or whatever, I mean, people, the collectors will buy more instruments. It's basically a, it's a very secure investment, especially if it's very good condition uh, and, and very original. Shops like Pensa's and vintage guitar trade shows like this one we visited in New Jersey are fueling the vintage guitar market. According to Vintage Guitar Magazine's Guitar Index, which tracks the value of 42 classic models, prices have steadily increased since 1991. For most one-of-a-kind and limited edition guitars, prices have remained high. But for less rare models, prices have leveled off over the last nine months and in some cases dropped. I'm not sure if I understand exactly why, if it has something to do with the mortgage mass or the debt market. If you've got something that is super rare, super high-end, tier one, excellent condition, 100% original, the market is still robust. For other guitars, you have to be really careful. Pensa says the prices can give some investors with a stronger stomach a buying opportunity. Right now, in the next six months, and in another year or two, they're not gonna, it's not going to be anything available for, for, you know, for the price that is affordable. But financial planners warn investors about getting into the game, especially if that means pulling money out of traditional retirement investments. It should be a small percentage because you don't know exactly what the payout's going to be there. You have to be able to, at some point, be able to part with it. And if you're truly an enthusiast, you might not be able to part with the things that are worth the most. Flynn says no more than 5 or 10% of your cash should go toward hobby investments. Pensa says he senses concern from his customers about their money and financial security. I never saw so many people at uh, the same <laughs> level of nervousness, meaning that they're going to come in and buy a lot of expensive guitars. Mm, I don't know. So one of the things we found so amazing about collecting vintage guitars is that many investors play these often uh, very, right, they very don't, they don't just valuable instruments. They actually right. use them, yeah. They, they use them, and, and, and experts say as long as they're, they're not scratched or nicked or broken in any way, that, that doesn't hurt the value. You can't play with your mutual funds. <laughs> Interesting point, though, that you collect them, uh, but it, it's not a liquid investment if you're not prepared to sell it. That's right. That's right. And it's, it's one of those things, just like when we talk about art or and cars, or cars yeah. you have to... No, you have to love it. You have to love it and know right. why you have it. I mean, I couldn't go out and buy a vintage guitar because I'm afraid I would make a terrible choice. <laughs> and I would just dent it and scratch it. Yeah, and I, and I don't know how I to play. I don't think my guitar is... Do you know how to play? No, I've never... I, like, I've tried to learn. Guitar...